there were some horrendous, some appallingly horrible calls in this year's national championship, especially in the finals. Did you watch the finals? Please drop your worst call, the worst call that you saw this whole tournament. I, I want to see a comment down below. And listen, I've watched national before, and there's always like some iffy, iffy situations as far as if it was two or not, if there are back points, it happens. And that's why the challenge bricks there. And that's why refs are allowed to review, review their own calls. But this year it just seemed awful. And listen, if you're a ref, one, I appreciate you because you are constantly getting yelled at by coaches, by fans, by everybody. I mean, you are just like, I don't want to say hated by a lot of the arena, but it's, it can definitely seem that way. So I appreciate you and, and everything that you're doing, but I'm, I got to do the job and talk about what wrestling fans are talking about. So what are the five worst calls? The first one here, and this is a Fanco 5, if I fail to mention that. This is a Fanco 5 worst calls of the entire NCAA tournament. The first one is Nick Renan. Nick Renan and Jacob Warner wrestled in round one. So this is right off the bat, right off the darn bat. This call happened. A minute into the first period, Nick Renan headlocks and tosses Jacob Warner to his back and gets a full four count. He's not pinned just yet, but he's able to kind of readjust. And, and as Renan is holding, of NC State, is holding Jacob Warner of Iowa on his back, you see him get so darn close to pinning him. And to be honest with you, at this, as he readjusts at this minute 32 left in the period mark, I thought he was absolutely right here in the video is where you see it pinned. I mean, he is flat as a darn pancake right there. Are you kidding me? How is this not a pin? Can somebody explain it to me how that wasn't a pin if his shoulder blades were flat on the mat? Holy moly, that blew my mind. So Warner fights off his back, is able to get a reversal and starts mounting a comeback in this match. It was seven. It, it, he got a takedown. It was seven to four, and with ten seconds left, Reening gets another stalling call that he had from earlier in the match and secured another takedown. Seven to seven is what the match was heading into sudden victory. So you can't say that Warner didn't start coming back and deserve to get into overtime. So in overtime, Warner actually does secure the takedown and gets the two. So listen, was he the better wrestler in the match? It. it I mean, yes, it. It seems that way. But was he pinned? really looked like it to me, and this really is something that could have affected the outcome of the entire NCAA race. It could have. We'll get to that in another segment, but Warner made the quarters, end up losing to Ferrari, and, and ended up coming back and taking fourth, while Renan lost the next round in the consolations. Now, Jacob Warner was somebody who was able to score 12 and a half points for the team, and who knows? Who knows what would have happened? But he looked pinned to me there. As far as the number four, the number four, and this was actually RBY and Dayton Fix in the finals. RBY and Dayton Fix in the finals was, this call just blew my mind. But before I get to that, I have to tell you that this segment is brought to you by Fanco Fanatic Southern Ohio. He's an awesome new fan that just joined the Patreon community who has already received his Fanco Wrestling exclusive sticker pack and is will be getting an exclusive shirt as well as some awesome behind the scenes content just like looking at my trip to the NCAA tournament in St. Louis. If you're interested in seeing the channel grow or you want to get this exclusive content in gear, consider joining at Patreon today. That's where you'll be able to help the Fanco Wrestling channel. But as far as the Dayton Fix and Surya, or Dayton Fix and Surya, Dayton Fix and RBY match in the finals, it was the third period. RBY had ridden out Dayton Fix. It was one to zero. Technically, it was two to zero with riding time, but one to zero is what the score showed, obviously. And here we get into the third period. Now, let me preface this before I show the video by saying. Fix had essentially one shot in the in the third period up until this point, and he was was kind of the the clear aggressor. But RBY was still getting on the reattacks. He was still reattacking every one of RB or of Dayton Fix's shots. RBY was getting in, trying to attack, but F Fix kept on pushing. RBY had a couple little fakes, a couple little attacks. He wasn't able to quite get to the leg. And that's where this happened. So at 45 seconds, with 45 seconds remaining in the period, RBY was hit with a stalling call. And I was like, okay, all right, one stalling, not the end of the world. And, it, you know, it kind of made sense. I don't think Fix was attacking that much, but still, it was kind of blew my mind. And then, and then, 15 seconds later, 
with 29 seconds left on the clock. The ref hits RBY again with a stalling call as Fix shoots him, pushes him out of bounds. It wasn't really even a shot out of bounds. It was just pushing him. I mean, two stalling calls in 15 seconds, ref, in the first finals match. Of course, me as a Penn State fan, I'm absolutely just losing my mind about this. But th- this just, it, it is just out of hand. Now, listen, did it end up mattering in the match? No, not really. It tied up the match. It was 2-2 two to two then, heading into sudden victory. And RBY was able to secure the takedown and won the national trophy. But, oh my gosh, if he lost based on those stolen calls, I was going to lose it. I was already losing it. Let's get in number three, Ja'Cory Teamer and Ryan Deacon. So, this was for the third and fourth place match, and this was another one that came down, it actually came down to the last second, the last second of the match, and please, again, like I said, I want to know what you thought of this call, what, what you thought was the worst call of the whole tournament. Ryan Deacon lost in the semis to Jesse De La Vecchia, but ended up coming back to get third. He was pinned in the semis, one of the craziest matches of the tournament. Ja'Cory Teamer, on the other hand, lost in round two to Brayton Lee. Then he was able to just crush Hayden Hiley and the Conzies 18 to 12. So we get into the Deacon and Ja'Cory Teamer match, who is just on fire. And these two are wrestling. It's one to zero. Deacon's up one to zero with an escape in the second. And Ja'Cory Teamer chooses neutral, which is honestly the best thing he could have done because. I mean, he can get get one tied up, but he's going to have to get a takedown, so may as well go for it, especially since Deacon is good on top. He's good in every position, solid in every position, but Teamer chooses a neutral. There's some back and forth, no real scores. They're kind of attacking each other, but there's 20 seconds left on the clock. Riding time is not a factor here. Not a factor here. So Teamer is in on the attack with a sweet jump over Deacon out of bounds, but that didn't really have anything to do with it. Uh, We get under the clock with 10 seconds left. These guys get back to the center. 10 seconds left. Deacon has a shot from space. Gets in on both legs on Deacon. Gets him down to a hip. Turns in towards Deacon's head with a foot foot still in bounds. I don't know how he kept it in bounds. He was able to end up getting control. The ref calls two with a second left on the clock as it appears to us. One second left. And they review it. So it looks like time ex- is expired now, or at least one second left on the clock. Teamer looked like he had two. Did he have two or not? The refs reviewed it and called no two, time expired. Now, there were two things here, okay? Two, th- there are a couple things here. One, did it appear? I was sitting front row. I mean, I was l- literally as close to the mat as you could get, almost. And it looked like Teamer had two. I was freaking out. I was like, did this really just happen? Rush reviewed it. Time ran out. So it looked like he had two. Luckily, he had control. He was still in bounds. That's that's not arguable. But the arguable thing is whether time had expired. Now, listen, from my point of view, from where I saw it, he had control. Clocks are running. Now, there is something to be said. Sometimes the clocks that are on the scoreboard uh, and, and these clocks that are on the clocks that are on TV and the clocks that are actually in the arena can be a bit wonky, like a second off. That's just kind of what it looks like. I mean, even even I just remember the Camacho and Latuna match where I thought time had expired. He didn't get two, but I guess the time actually hadn't expired just based on how the clocks were ticking. So it was really, you know, this is, could be another one of the situations. But no, I to me, he had to when the time had expired. What was the outcome here? Deacon and I mean, there was nothing else they could do. No more time to wrestle. Jacory was the aggressor in the third period, but it, he ended up taking fourth as the number 11th seed. It was impressive. Deacon ended up coming back and taking third. But I'll tell you what. I thought Jacory had two points. Two more. Two more just horrible calls. Just bad calls. Number two, before I get to the craziest of the entire tournament, I'm sure you probably already know what it is. Jaden Ironman and Tariq Wilson. Now listen. Ironman was on fire up until this point. A tech fall. He got a decision in a pin heading into the semifinals. Ironman is just the clear... He's the aggressor at this point in the match in the first period. Just going after Tariq. He is just crushing it. 
He gets a couple close. He gets in on a couple shots. A couple close takedowns out of bounds. Doesn't end up. He isn't able to get anything, but. It, he is darn close on a couple of these things, a couple of these takedowns. With 21 seconds left, Ironman gets in on a shot, gets in on the shot, or actually, excuse me, Tariq gets in on the low single, but Ironman's able to get in on Tariq's leg, flip him over, and as you know, Ironman's super slick, turn him on his back, has him in a half, but with nine seconds left, the ref calls a pin. Now listen, to me, and if you watch the video, does it not look like... Tariq's shoulder blade is up. And I'm actually going to play this video one more time just because it it kind of blew my mind. Like, I, I didn't realize it as, as I was in the arena, but upon the replay, I saw the shoulder blade, the shoulder blade looked like it was off the mat. How are you going to call, right there, shoulder blade off the mat, a pin? I don't know. This sent Jaden Iron to the finals. And listen, I'm not saying, I mean, full disclosure, I picked Tariq Wilson to make the finals. I thought he could have beat Jaden Ironman. Coming into that match, coming into the tournament where we saw it, no, I think that Ironman was the clear aggressor and was kind of on fire. He was probably going to beat Tariq, but who knows what would have happened? Who knows? Tariq ended up coming back and taking third, but Ironman got the two points, two extra points for his team, got the advancement points to the finals. And this was huge for Iowa. I mean, just absolutely huge. He ended up losing in the finals to Nick Lee, but wow, I don't think he was pinned. Do you? Do you think he was pinned? As far as the worst call of the tournament, I already did a video about this, and there's only so much more that can be said. This was the worst call, hands down. Like, all these other calls were, wasn't a huge fan of, but didn't have... Didn't have the impact that this did. Josh Heil and Bula Wallen. Round two of the NCAA championships. Now listen, on this point, Josh Heil is a 20 seed. Bula Wallen is a number four seed of Oklahoma State. Heil gets an escape and a takedown in the second period. And with Boo's escape in the, uh, with actually two escapes, one off of Josh Heil's takedown and the other in the third period, it's three to two. Boo gets a takedown in the third, and Heil hits a quick escape. So it's 4-4 four to four heading into sudden victory. These two are dead even. Dead even. First overtime, there's no takedowns. And the first ride out, Heil gets a reversal and rides out Boo. So he is up by two points. And the second ride out, this is what gets crazy, okay? This is where the craziness happens. They're back in bounds. Back on their feet, and there's seven seconds left on the clock. Bulawan keeps shooting, keeps attacking Josh Heil, almost gets two takedowns out of bounds, but the clock expires, or as it appears to expire as they go out of bounds. But guess what? The clock wasn't running. The clock wasn't running at the national tournament with seven seconds left. So, one, with no takedown called, the Oklahoma State coaches call... Uh, cha- they try to challenge it. Ref saying no takedown. They come back in, and then, of course, the Campbell coaches are yelling that there were that there was time that should be off the clock. Refs kind of said no, that didn't happen. Or, or actually, the ref said, "Yeah, we can take some time off the clock." Because the head table that said, "No, there's nothing concrete to take time off." So these two end up wrestling. The seven seconds, they basically re-wrestle the period, the end of the period, in overtime. And Boo ends up getting a takedown to win the match. Moving him to the quarters, he ends up making the semifinals and losing. But absolutely robbed. This was heartbreaking to watch. The entire arena was booing him. And I, they weren't yelling boo because boo, for Boo LaWall. And they were yelling boo because this was a horrible call. And of course, the ref of the NCAA tournament or the head official of the NCAA tournament came over and tried to explain the rules. He tried to explain it on national TV after. There's no concrete evidence. You can't actually take time off. What a bunch of... Excuse my language, but BS. That was just wrong horrible call and it's going to result in a rule change it just is interestingly enough this is going to be the probably the second rule change that involves 
that's going to involve a Dean a Heil and John Smith. The first, of course, Dean Heil of Oklahoma State with John Smith in his corner involved the the uh, danger rule. And the second is going to involve Josh Heil in this horrible call that apparently there's no concrete evidence. Horrible. The outcome of this, Luwala makes the semis, ends up taking fourth. Josh Heil ends up getting eliminated in the Conseys. Anything can happen in the Conseys, so it was just so darn unfortunate and such, I mean, such an impactful match that it was a shame to see. If you like this clip and are looking for more wrestling news and discussion, I recommend that you check out the full Fanco Wrestling Show podcast, which is live on this YouTube channel every single week. You can click here to subscribe to be notified of new and upcoming videos, or you can check out the Fanco Wrestling Show on your favorite podcasting platform to listen on the go. Stop stalling and start listening today.